Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this segmented bowl without a lathe. Check it. Last week we made this segmented bowl on the lathe, and a few of you commented that you didn't have a lathe but thought you could make it on the bandsaw. So today we're gonna to make another segmented bowl without the lathe, but we're still gonna do some profiling on the edge. I got this beautiful piece of mahogany from Kencraft. So the first thing I need to do is resaw this so I can get this into two three-quarter inch boards. We even have this thin little piece left over from the resawing that we can use in a future project. Here's the profile that I want to do on the bowl. This will be one section, and then maybe this is another section, and then this is another section, and this is another section. After we get those profiles that we want, we can glue those sections together. We have 12 segments. Our radius is three inches. The ring thickness is going to be a half inch with an eighth inch on either side to allow us to do some shaping. So now we're going to cut our segments. I made this handy little jig that sets my miter gauge to the perfect 15 degrees for 12 segments. You can also get a digital angle gauge. So now my miter fence is all set up. I got my stop block all set up. You do one, you flip it over, you do another, and you keep doing that until you have enough segments. One. So I'm going to glue all 12 pieces at the same time. If you remember from the last video, I did it in halves to make up for any air. But since I've made that jig over there, I don't get much of an air and I can do it all at one time. So this is gluing end grain to end grain, which isn't very strong, but it doesn't matter because the strength is going to come from the layers. So I'm just using a pipe clamp. Not a pipe clamp, Dan. Last week we called it pipe clamps. They're actually hose clamps and only one person called me out on that. You guys aren't doing your job out there. So now that our rings are dry, I need to sand one face flush. And that's where this adhesive back sandpaper comes in. Really good. So we'll just do one of these until I get a nice flat face. And then we can take them over to the bandsaw and resaw them up. Or if you have a drum sander, run it right through there. So now that we have the rings all resawed and sanded, we're going to glue them back up and this is where the strength is actually going to come from because we're going to take this and then we're going to rotate it. So Dan, you can put salt in there in between the layers to keep it from sliding around. We're going to draw a circle on here that we can cut out over on the bandsaw. I made a template. You can use anything. Dan kind of realized that our sandpaper is almost the perfect size. So whatever you can do to get a circle on there. And we're gonna cut that out on the... We could have used my template, double stick tape that on there, and then use a flush trim in the router, but I don't like using routers. So over here at the router, I have a round over bit in there, and we're gonna... So we got the inside sanded. I don't want to sand to its finished dimensions just yet. I just wanted to get most of it now. Then when we stack them all together, we'll do some final sanding and shaping of the inside. So going back to our drawing here, we have our top layer. And then next up is this ring here. And we're just going to use a single ring and it's going to have a straight edge. And so I'm just going to cut this out on the bandsaw. So it's a little bit smaller in diameter. We have our two rings. We're gonna glue them together, but before doing so, we're gonna sand them now because it's just gonna be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. 
The next section is this part right here, which is gonna be our feature section. This is gonna be the fancy part of it. And instead of using wood, I'm going to use acrylic, but just cut it the same way I normally would, piece together something that, that looks good, and glue it on here. You can cut acrylic on the table saw. I actually want to do smaller segments. I want to do 24 segments this time, and that's getting my hands really close to the blade. So I'm going to go cut them out over at the laser cutter. Just gonna throw some random colors into the laser cutter, cut a bunch out, and then play with some patterns. Got a whole bunch of pieces cut, enough to play around with. The bottom part and the top part of this feature is going to be pure white. So I'm going to assemble that layer right now. And we have some acrylic cement. Might be a little hard to tell, but we've got a diamond of the teal surrounded by purple. Hopefully this works, Dan. Three layers done, three to go. And the last piece. Once this dries, we can take that and shape it. I don't think it's very safe to route something that is just a single layer with the end grain. But since these have multiple layers and all that strength is coming from the lamination, this will be safe. This will not be safe. Just throwing it out there. You got to be safe, Dan. Right? That's right. So over here at the router, I have this router bit right here, which has a bearing on top. And this is going to give me the profile that I want on the bottom of the bowl. I use some double-sided tape to adhere the pattern. It is time to make the bottom. This is that template that I used over at the router table. I'm just gonna use that to draw a circle. I realized this is way too thick, so now I'm going to resaw this down at the bandsaw. Cutting circles on the bandsaw, very dangerous because the blade's gonna wanna grab it and do one of those things. You don't want one of those things. We're back over here at the router table to do a round over. Now we're just going to glue the bottom onto the bottom. That makes sense, right? That's where the bottom goes, dude. Uh, ignore this. This is something uh, not for your eyeballs. All right, last thing we need to do, put some finish on this guy. So there it is, that came out amazing. I'm super, super happy with the way that came out. The idea for this bowl came from last week's project when we made this one on the lathe and a few of you commented saying, hey, I would like to make that. Maybe I could do it on the bandsaw because I don't have a lathe and that spark some ideas like maybe we can do some advanced profiling this was an experiment and it's one of those experiments that came out really really good all of this wood came from my friends at kencraft you can visit them at kencraftcompany.com the point of this video is to show you that there's always more than one way to do something in woodworking if you don't have a tool Use another tool, you can figure it out. There's always another way. I will have this guy up for sale on eBay. We'll start that off at a dollar. There'll be a link down in the description. On my website at makesomething.com, we've got t-shirts, books, stickers, and plans. So check that out. We'll see you guys next week with a brand new project. As always, have fun, be safe, stay passionate, and make something.